Hello everyone, this is Kalpana here. In this video, we are going to solve a differential equation from higher order linear differential equation. So let's get going. Problem. Solve d square minus 2d plus 4 into y equals to e for x sine x by 2. So firstly, let's find the order and degree of the given differential equation. Identify the highest derivative here. D square is the highest derivative, so our order will be 2. And highest power of the highest derivative is a degree degree is 1. Or just write the given differential equation as d square y minus 2dy plus 4y equals to e power x sine x by 2. We know that d is a differential operator. Then d square will be d square by dx square. Right. Now we can write the given differential equation as g square y by dx square minus 2 into dy by dx plus 4y equals to e power x into sine x by 2. Here d square y by dx square is the highest derivative so our order will be 2 and highest power of the highest derivative is a degree degree is 1. Right? Now coming to the problem. Given differential equation, d square minus 2d plus 4 into y equals to e power x sine x by 2, which is an operator form. f of d into y equals to q, where f of d equals to d square minus 2d plus 4 and q equals to e power x sine x by 2. Now we need to find the general solution to the given equation which is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Here yc is a complementary function, yp is a particular integral. We will find yc using the roots of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous equation. By putting rhs to 0, we will get the homogeneous equation f of d into y equals to 0 of the given non-homogeneous equation. And we will find yp using 1 by f of d into q. So let us find yc and yp now. The auxiliary equation... of homogeneous equation is f of m equals to 0 where f of m equals to we have f of d d square minus 2d plus 4 let's replace differential operator by m so that will get f of m equals to m square minus 2m plus 4 then our auxiliary equation becomes m square minus 2m plus 4 equals to 0 now let's find the roots of this equation using quartic formula m equals to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Now compare this equation with quartic equation in m am square plus bm plus c equals to 0. Now compare the equations of m square a equals to 1. Compare the quotient of m, we will get b equals to minus 2 and c equals to 4. Then, m equals to minus b, minus of minus 2, plus or minus square root of b square, that is minus 2 whole square, minus 4 a c by 2a, 2 into 1, this is equals to Minus into minus plus 2 plus or minus square root of minus 2 whole square is 4 minus 4 fours are 16 by 2 which is equals to 2 plus or minus square root of 4 minus 16 is minus 12 by 2. Now we can write minus 12 as minus 1 into 4 into 3 or 3 into 4 whatever is equals to. 2 plus or minus square root of minus 1 into square root of 4 into square root of 3 
by 2. We know that square root of minus 1 is i and square root of 4 is 2. So this becomes 2 plus or minus i. Just replace square root of mi minus 1 with i and square root of 4 with 2. And root 3 remains the same by 2. Now take 2 common from the numerator. We will get 2 times 1 plus or minus i into root 3. By 2, 2 gets cancelled. You will get 1 plus or minus i root 3. A pair of complex conjugate roots. Therefore, m equals to 1 plus or minus i root 3 is a pair of complex conjugate roots to this equation, right? Of f of m equals to 0, our auxiliary equation. We know that a plus ib is a complex number, then its conjugate is a minus ib, right? If a minus ib is a complex number, its conjugate will be a plus ib. So we can call a plus or minus ib as complex conjugate, a pair of complex conjugate. If we get m equals to a pair of complex conjugate rules, then why is it looks like a power ax into c1 cos bx plus c2 sin bx. Right? Now let's write a complementary function using this formula. Okay, for a equals to 1 and b equals to root 3. Complementary function y c equals to e power for a equals to 1 we will get 1 into x into 1 constant into cos root 3 into x plus another constant into sine root 3 into x then y c becomes e power 1 into x is x into c1 cos root 3 into x, x root 3 plus c2 sine root 3 into x, x root 3, right? We got yc now, let's find particular integral. Particular integral. We'll find using 1 by 4 of d into q. We have f of d and q where f of d is d squared minus 2d plus 4 and q is e power x sine x by 2. This is of 1 by f of d into e power ax into v form. Okay. We'll shift e power ax towards left by replacing this d with d plus a. And later we'll operate v using 1 by f of d, right? Now, compare e power x with e power a. Then for a equals to 1, we'll find d plus a, which is equals to d plus 1, right? Now, we'll shift e power x towards left by replacing this d with d plus 1. e power x into 1 by replace d with d plus 1, whole square minus 2 into d plus 1 plus 4, into sine x by 2 is equals to e power x into 1 by expand d plus 1 whole square using a plus b whole square expansion. We will get d square plus 1 plus 2d minus 2 into d 2d minus into plus minus 2 into 1 2 plus 4 into sine x by 2. Right? Now yp becomes e power x into 1 by here plus 2d minus 2d gets cancelled. We will get d square plus 1 plus 4 is plus 5 minus 2 into sine x by 2. 
right? This is equals to e power x into 1 by d square plus 5 minus 2 is plus 3 into sine x by 2. So here the term under brackets is of 1 by some function of d into sine dx form, right? Or for our convenience, we can write sine x by 2 as 1 by 2 into x, right? For b equals to 1 by 2 into x, okay? b equals to 1 by 2. And this is of 1 by g of d into sine b into x. Fine. Or the known form 1 by f of d into sine ax, which we have used in earlier problems, previous problems, right? But here already we have sine, uh, sorry, f of d. We have named this function as f of d, right? So that we are naming d square plus 3. That is the term in d as some function of d. Okay. Now we will proceed 1 by f of d into sine ax method here. We have g of d equals to d square plus 3, right? Now, d square appears in the denominator and also we are having sine bx. So, we will find d square which is given by minus of b square for b equals to 1 by 2. We will find d square minus of 1 by 2 whole square which is minus of 1 by 2 square equals to minus of 1 by 4 or minus 1 by 4 I can say. Right? Now what happens if we replace d square by minus 1 by 4 in the denominator? Let's see what happens in the denominator. The denominator must be non-zero. What happens if we get denominator 0? The term becomes 1 by 0 into sine 1 by 2 into x. Since 1 by 0 is undefined, so total term becomes undefined. Okay? Always keep in mind that the denominator must be non-zero. Now let's see what happens if we replace this d with minus 1 by 4. I'll take the denominator part and replace d square by minus 1 by 4. I'll get minus 1 plus 3. 4 3 is a 12 by 4 which is equal to 12 minus 1 is 11 by 4 which is a non-zero term, right? We got some non-zero number otherwise. So the denominator is non-zero by replacing this d square by minus 1 by 4. So we can replace. Replace d square by minus 1 by 4. Then we'll get e power x into 1 by minus 1 by 4 plus 3 into sine 1 by 2 into x is equal to e power x into 1 by minus 1 plus 3, 4 3 is a 12 by 4, this becomes e power x into 1 by minus 1 plus 4 3 is a 12 by 4 into sine 1 by 2 into x. This equals to e power x into 1 by minus 1 plus 12 is 11 by 4 into sine. I'll just write it as x by 2, okay? Now it's not necessary to show it as bx. I mean in sine bx form. It's not necessary. So I'll write 1 by 2 into x as x by 2. This equals to e power x into we can write this fraction as 1 into 4 by 11. We can write the whole number as a fraction into sine x by 2 is equals to e power x into 1 into 4, 4 by 11, right, into sine 
x by 2. Or we can just write this as 4 by 11 into e power x into sine x by 2. So these are required yp. Therefore, yp equals to 4 by 11 into e power x into sine x by 2. We got yc and yp, so we can write the general solution now. The general solution is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Then y equals to yc, we have e power x into c1 cos x root 3 plus c2 sine x root 3. Plus yp is 4 by 11 e power x into sine x by 2. This completes the problem, right? So we have seen a problem from higher order linear differential equation in this video. Hope you'll understand. We'll see you in my next video. Until then, bye-bye.